Shalom, my dearly beloveds. I greet you all in the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our soon on coming King. Um, I pray you're all well. Just bringing a message right now for encouragement for the body of Christ that we may examine ourselves. Amen. For we know we are living in the end times. Amen. There's floods and tsunamis and earthquakes and volcanoes erupting and all kinds of stuff all over the place. Um, wars and rumors of wars between Russia and China and America and all the signs of the Lord's soon return. Amen. Even though there are still a few more prophecies that need to be fulfilled before the Lord's return, we know we are close. Amen. So we have to prepare ourselves for the rapture. Also, uh, death has no manners. Amen. Death turns up whenever it turns up. So it's not only preparing ourselves for the rapture, but also preparing ourselves to meet our maker because we can die at any time. Amen. But it is appointed for once for man to die, and after that come the judgment. So we constantly have to examine ourselves, who we are or where we are on our walk with the Lord. And so I'll be talking about the thieves on the cross with Jesus Christ. Um, he was crucified alongside two thieves. Amen. One on the left, one on the right. And I believe these two, these two thieves are a symbol of the state of mankind. Amen. Some mankind are repentant and some mankind just have no remorse. Amen. And now is the time to check ourselves, to check our garments, to make sure that we are aligning ourselves to the word and the will of God. Amen. So I'll be reading from Luke chapter 23, starting from verse 32. Amen. This was when Jesus was brought up and he was laid on the cross. And there were also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. And the malefactors, one on the right and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Amen. The very same men that put Jesus and nailed him upon the cross. The love of God is so beautiful that at that time he was praying for them saying, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. How are you in your walk of forgiveness? How are you with your husband or your wives or your brother or your sister, your friends or your neighbors, your co-worker, your colleague, the people that hurt you, reject you, revile you? Are you forgiven to them? Or are you carrying malice and anger in your heart, hoping that the Lord will just strike them with lightning and kill them on the spot? Because the Bible says in our Our Father prayer that we must forgive our debts. We ask the Lord to forgive our debt as we forgive our debtors. Asking the Lord to forgive us for our sins while we forgive others for their sins. Amen. There's no point asking the Lord to forgive you for your sins and you're not forgiving others for your sins. That gives the devil legality to work in your life. Amen. Scripture talks about a man who holds someone like, I don't know, 10,000 or a big amount of money. And he was unable to pay. And he was to be put to death, him and his family. And the man cried, oh, have mercy upon me, forgive me. Give me time to pay this debt. And this person was forgiven. But this very same person saw someone who hold him a small amount compared to what he owed. And this person did just like he did. I said, please forgive me, have mercy upon me, give me time to pay the debt. And he had the man cast into prison. And for that, his punishment was severe. So are we asking the Lord to forgive us? Are we not forgiving others? Jesus is our example. He said in his word that we must forgive not only seven times seven, but 70 times seven daily. That's like a thousand and how many times do the maths? You meant to forgive a person that hurts you daily. Much less once a week or once a month or once a year. We must walk forgiven. Amen. And the Lord here was showing us how to walk in his love and his grace. He says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they have done. Amen. How wonderful and beautiful is our Lord. Verse 35. Because he's forgiven the people that put him on the cross. He's still hoping for salvation for them saying, forgive them Lord for they don't know what they're doing. They don't know that I'm the son of God. They don't know that I'm the Messiah which they are waiting upon. They don't know that I came here to give them all a chance for salvation. 
they've been blinded by the devil have mercy upon them forgive them for they know not what they have done oh how the lord loves us verse 35 and the people stood beholding and the rulers also with them derided him saying he saved others let him save himself if he be christ and the chosen of god they even was mocking him so how is it you walk around you raise the dead you made the blind see the cripple walk and you can't save yourself taunting him at that moment jesus could have just left and went back to heaven he destroyed the whole earth so you know what i'm trying to help you guys but you know what you lot ain't appreciating it so you know what bye we destroy the earth make a new earth new humans it's that simple but the Bible teaches that love perseveres and long suffering. And once again, he was being the example. So he was persevering on long suffering. Amen. He took on all of that torment and humiliation. The mocking. He saved others. Let him save himself. If he be Christ, the chosen of God. The devil was using them to tempt him. Just like how in the wilderness the devil said unto him, Oh, if you be the son of God, you're hungry. Turn the bread in the stone into bread. Oh, the Bible says if you first of the mountains, that the angels will catch you. They was always trying to tempt the Lord. And once again, he's using the mouth of the people around him in his difficult situation to tempt him. I don't know what you're going through in your personal life, but I know that when it rains, it storms. Amen. When your blessing is coming, the devil tries to break you. Amen. When the Lord is trying to give you a testimony, the devil comes to test you. Amen. So, just like in this difficult time, the people around him, the devil chose to use their mouth to attack him. How are you being attacked with the people around you? Amen. Are you crying, asking for a hug and telling him to shut up and be quiet? Is your heart breaking and they're breaking it even more? Are the people that you're helping turning their back on you when you need them the most? Stand firm. Hold on to your faith. Continue on your walk with the Lord for he sees all things. Amen. And there's an appointed time where he will raise you up. The Bible says that I will prepare a table before you in the midst of your enemies. Those people that laughed at you and saw you cry and broken. The Lord will bless you so that they can see you happy and walking in your anointing and your blessings. Stand firm. Amen. Don't let the lever tell them, oh, turn away from your God. He's no good. Amen. Look at Job. Job is a perfect example of this. When Job was going through his difficulties, he lost all of his riches, his cattle. He even lost his children. It was at that point where his wife should have had compassion, hugging him, loving him, telling him, my husband, I'm so proud that you stood faith in the Lord, that you still believing in your God. Surely the Lord will repay you and re and, 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 and re bless you with everything that you've lost in multiplication. But no, she did not stand by him like that. She allowed the devil to use him to attack, to use her, excuse me, to attack him even more. She said to him, curse your God. Where is he? Even his friends, when his friends came around, I was like, nah, Job, you must have done something. Because you're a righteous man, so for this to happen, you, you sinned, you, you this, you that. But Job did nothing wrong. These things happened because of what he did right. Amen? Even look at Hannah. Hannah cried and wept and was broken. Because she couldn't bear a son. And her husband's other wife have a son and was taunting her. Ha ha. I gave him a son. You're barren. You're useless. I'm a good wife. You're not. You can't even have a child for him. And she wept bitterly. And before her husband says to her, I love you regardless if you give me a son or not. You will always be my wife regardless if you are barren or not. And embrace her, had compassion. That's the what he done. He allowed the devil to use him even worse to attack her by saying, why are you always crying? What's wrong with you? Am I not better than 10 sons? The woman is born to bring forth a child. So just like how men like to feel like men, obviously she doesn't feel like a woman at the moment because she can't bring forth a child. And before you say that, you will hold her hand and pray with her and you will trust the Lord to, 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 to bless her with a child. One day you say, what are you crying for? You don't need no child. Am I not better than 10 child? The pride broke her even more. But glory to God, he gave her that child, amen. And glory to Job, the Lord restored everything that he lost, amen.
So what are the people around you doing? Are they supporting you at the time of need or are they bringing you down? Stand firm in your faith because blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. Amen. So anyway, they stood there and they mocked him saying, He saved others, let him save himself if he be the Christ, the chosen of God. Verse 36, And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar. Amen. How many of you know that the body is like 80 something percent water? So sweat, blood, it's all made up of water. I'm pretty sure from the day before when he broke bread, he had nothing to eat since. Nothing to drink also. So he must have been thirsty. And I believe scientists or biologists teach that when you're thirsty, if you drink vinegar, it can kill you or harm you in a very dangerous way, something like that. But vinegar is not water. But they mocked him, the Bible says. Offering him vinegar. Why? Because he was thirsty. He was hanging up on that cross, probably in the sun hut. Arms aching, nails through his hands and his feet. In agony, hanging from these nails. Hallelujah, thank you Jesus. Nails on his feet, plus the whips and the lashes on his back by his stripes we were made healed. Hallelujah, ah. That hurts. Thirsty. Matter of fact, let's look at that verse. Isaiah chapter 53 verses 5 says, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we were healed. Wounded for our transgressions. He took beating for our sins. Bruised for our iniquity. Had scars upon all of his body for the things that we did to transgress against the Lord. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. He got beaten for us to have peace. And with his stripes we are healed. Stripes was the, was the gauges of big cuts. I was whipped through his back. That when he got whipped and it hooked because it had little hooks on it. And it ripped off his flesh and he bled. All that pain and agony he went through for us. So not only was he thirsty, he was in excruciating pain. Excruciating pain. Bearing our sins. It's like we commit a crime to be sentenced to be put to death. And he says, wait, I will take the punishment for you so you can have eternal life. What manner of love is this? The love of God for his children. For the Bible says, God so loved the world. And he said, his only begotten son done on the cross to die for our forgiveness. That we, that we may have eternal life and not perish. Amen. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar because he was thirsty. Amen. And saying, if thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. Once again, there was mocking him for another person's mouth. If you're really the son of God, take yourself off the cross. He could have. But if he did, none of us would have a chance of salvation. Staying on that cross, hanging there, bleeding in pain, agony, sweating, thirsty. How many of you have been in a hot country and want a bottle of water? How many of you have been fasting like a dry fast and been really thirsty? You can't even imagine what he went through for us. No one else could have done this. That's why he only he is worthy to open the scrolls. Amen. But at that point, if he had went back, he wouldn't have saved us. We wouldn't have been saved. So when he hanged on that cross, when he took them whips, he was just thinking of the love that he had for me. For you, that's under the sound of my voice. For all of us. That's what his mind was upon. I have to do this because I love them and I want to save them. I have to persevere. Amen. He knew what he had to go through. That's why the night before when he was praying on the mountain, he sweated blood. And once again, where are the people when you need them the most? Because he asked his disciples to pray. And they fell asleep. It's like, what? You lot can't even pray for an hour. I'm about to be crucified for you. I asked you to pray for help. Where are the people you call pray for me? No. Fast for me? No, I'm not going out for dinner today. Help? No, no helping. No, glory to God, amen. Glory to God for he uplifts us with his righteous right hand. Amen. He gives us strength when our strength runs out. Amen. He's our father for the fatherless. He's our provider, our healer, our consolation, our comforter. He's our everything. And this is why it says, put not your trust in men because men will fail you. Hannah went to her husband, he failed her. Lot went to his wife, she failed him. 
Jesus went to his friends. They failed him too. Amen. Hallelujah. If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And to mock him even more. Verse 38. And a subscription was also written over him in, in, in letters in Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. They mocked him and knew not what they was doing. They put a sign above his head saying, here's the king of the Jews. Also, they gave him the crown of thorns. Why? Because he came as a lamb to the slaughter. But glory to God, he's coming back as the king of kings and the lord of lords. And the Bible says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is lord of lords and king of kings. Amen. Just mocking him. Amen. And of the male factors which were hanged wrote on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and save us. This is where we get into the rudeness of the message. A person hanging on the cross next to him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself, hallelujah, and save us. Some of us come to church because not because we recognize that the Lord is King, that He's our Savior, that He died for us, that we need Him. He says he's the bread and the water of life because we need bread and we need water how much we need him. And so we don't care for what God is or what he's done for us or his sacrifice. We only care for what, they only care for what he can do for them. And this one says, if thou be Christ, meaning he didn't know the Lord. He just heard that he's the king of kings. If thou be Christ, save thyself and save us. Wrong attitude. Wrong attitude. If thou be Christ, save that servant, save us. He's basically mocking the same way that the 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 soldiers mocked him. And the others that stood around. The rulers. He's mocking. How many of you mock the Lord? Jesus ain't real. Jesus ain't coming back. Christianity is fake. There's no this, there's no that. We evolved. I am God, there is no God. I myself am God. Sad brothers and sisters. Sad. If thou be Christ, save thyself and save us. But the other answering rebuked him saying does not thou fear God seeing thou are in the same condemnation amen now this is the other type of people you got one person excuse me who's sitting there saying oh if your God save us just all this pride he's about to die and he's still sitting there mocking God but you have others out here now who are like rebuking him like me and others out there, like, like you listening, who share messages about God, warning people, Jesus is real. He loves you. He's coming. Repent of your sins for the kingdom of God is at hand. Do not drink. Do not smoke. Do not party. Do not dress worldly. Do not do this. Do not do that. God don't like it. Repent, repent, repent. You're warning them and they're not listening. This man was warning the other one. Does thou not fear God? He's talking about Jesus. Thou are in the same damnation. You're up here with sin, cursing the man that came to take our sins. Not smart. And then he goes on to say, And we indeed justly for receive the due reward of our deeds. He's basically saying, We deserve to be up here on the cross. You're a thief. I'm a thief. Because in them days, for the, for the Romans or whoever it was at the time, that was like the way to punish to punish people, to crucify them on a cross. It was like the worst punishment. This what at the time that's what Jesus received. He wasn't the only one on a cross at that time and period. This is what they did to people to give them the worst punishment to put them on a cross. This is what I think it was Pilate or whoever said, "What do you want me to do with him?" And they're like, "Release Barnabas and crucify Jesus." Barnabas was like a murderer or something. Jesus did nothing wrong. And rather to see a murderer released and crucify Jesus than to set Jesus free. 
and crucify Barnabas. But the scripture had to be fulfilled, amen? Because the Bible says that he should be crucified. He shall die for our sake. None of his bones shall be broken. It's all in prophecy. Amen. To bruise the head of the serpent. Amen. For one man condemned the whole world, Adam. So one man shall free the whole world from condemnation, Jesus. Amen. So he was challenging him, rebuking him, saying, Does not fear God? We're in the same condemnation. We are indeed justy. Us being up here is justified. We receive the due reward of our deeds, for we are sinners. We are thieves. But this man has done nothing amiss. He done nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. Bless that man in Jesus' name because he too was up there. He probably didn't get as whipped and beaten. He was not in the pain that Jesus was in. But he too hung up there and he took the last of his strength to tell this man, what are you doing? This man's up here dying for our sins. This is God, don't you not fear him? Don't mock God. We deserve to be crucified. He doesn't. He done nothing wrong. And he said unto Jesus, Lord. See, he knew who Jesus was. The first man said, if thou be Christ. He didn't know. But this one said, Lord. Because he knew that Christ was the Messiah. He knew Jesus was the Son of God. He says, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. For he knows the Lord's going back to heaven. What he didn't know was the Lord was going to go into the belly of the earth, defeat the devil, take back the keys that Adam gave up to the devil when he sinned. The key of death and life, everything, taking it all back and come to give to us that follow him. Amen. But, but he said, Lord, when thou comest into thy kingdom, remember me. Remember me. Amen. And some of us, the Lord will remember you because you've preached the gospel. You've challenged those who said that Jesus wasn't real. You tried to follow Jesus. Amen. So there we have two men. One on the left saying, Oh, if you be God, free yourself and free us. He didn't want Jesus. He didn't want to serve him. He didn't worship him. He didn't even know who he was. And in them days, if anybody was famous, it was Jesus. So if you didn't know him, you didn't want to know him. Amen. And then you had the other. Saying, Jesus, remember me. One was basically full of pride and one was confessing their sins. He confessed his sins. Because he said, we are just of being here. We receive our due reward. Basically saying, yeah, I know I'm a sinner. I deserve to be up here. I mean, the other guy was going to die anyway. If he was smart, he would have tried a chance of salvation. Repent him. He didn't. He just had pride. But the other one confessed his sins and asked the Lord to remember him. Amen. I pray the Lord remembers you in Jesus' name. Verse 43. And Jesus said unto him, Verily, meaning surely for those of you that don't know, Verily I say unto thee, Today shall thou be with me in paradise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Today shall thou be with me in paradise. Why? Because you, because you confessed your sins. Amen. The Bible says to confess your sins, to repent. Amen. The Lord is just and merciful and gracious to forgive. Also, note that Jesus was in the middle. Amen. As he became the bridge for mankind and God. So was he the bridge of salvation. If who wants to cross that bridge through him. One of the thieves did not take the opportunity to repent of their sins and they died in their sin. The other one repented and surely the Lord says, Today you shall be with me in paradise, which meant he was. How are you with your walk in the Lord? Are you repenting daily of your sins, those known, those unknown? Are you asking the Lord to reveal the things to you? Sometimes I ask the Lord to reveal to me hidden sins. I don't, he reminds me something like 15 years ago. Oh Lord, is there anything I'm doing right now? And I remember like, for example, I find the trousers when I used to work in a restaurant. And obviously I had to take it home to wash it. I don't work with them anymore. 
and the charges stay in my position. That's theft, the Lord said. Do I have to repent? Amen. You have to Lord ask the Lord to reveal the things to you that you should not be doing. Repent. You repent of your sins. This man repented and salvation was his. How was your walk with the Lord? Amen. Make sure you're the thief that confessed his sins so you can have salvation and not the one that pridefully mocked God. Amen. So brothers and sisters, just want to come and share this encouraging word. Amen. So may you be blessed. May you receive this word in your heart. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide in you and me all. Prepare us for these difficult times that are ahead and for the Lord's return. In Jesus' precious holy name, amen.